Welcome back to the ProMiles Online video tutorials. Let's talk for a few minutes about fuel purchase optimization. This is probably the place where you have the chance to save the most money week in and week out. Now, by fuel purchase optimization, uh, I've got a quick trip I've plugged in here. Uh, let's make sure that, that we're all on the same page here. I am not really referring to just taking a look at the truck stops and what the prices are saying okay well this is the cheapest one that I see I'll get my fuel there fuel purchase optimization is actually a lot more than that fuel purchase optimization goes in and evaluates specific criteria and analyzes it on an overall basis suggest where you should buy fuel and how much fuel you should buy when you stop to save the most money. Now then, the initial setup for the fuel purchase optimization is done in, in the options section uh, on the fuel optimization tab and it can seem a little overwhelming at first but it's actually pretty basic information that you're going to go through here and enter. Uh, your average unit MPG, your tank capacity, how much fuel you've got at the start. Now then, absolute versus preferred minimum fuel in tank doesn't really even come into play unless you've got a checkbox in the absolute preferred method. Uh, without that, it goes with the, the preferred method uh, settings. And basically what it amounts to is I don't, you know, in this, in this scenario, I don't want to get less than 40 gallons in my tank. But if, if the pricing allows me the advantage, I'm willing to go as low as 20 gallons. And, and here again, you can, you can set this to be whatever you want it to be. Now then, keep in mind that as you adjust these numbers, there's a lot of rationale that has to go into it on the back end. So if, if you have more questions on, on specific things, feel free to give us a call. Uh, now then, we've also got absolute and preferred minimum in gallons, uh, what you want to have in your tank at the end of your trip. And a lot of people don't understand why this is in here uh, and, and why it is so necessary to consider it on each trip. But, you know, if you if you think about it, if your trip's going to end in, in Dallas or Atlanta or, you know, New Orleans or someplace in, in, in the Gulf, along the Gulf Coast region, uh, chances are uh, your minimum gallons can, can be fairly low. And you're going to be able to find fuel on as you start your next trip at a good price. On the other hand, if you're running a trip into the Los Angeles area or up into the northeast, you may want to set your preferred minimum in gallons up more in the half tank range or so. Uh, simply to to try and give you enough fuel on board when you get to your destination to be able to pick up your next load and get back out to where more favorable prices can be found. Distance out of route for fuel. Here again, another little bit of a misconception. A lot of people say, I don't want to go out of route, and, and we understand that. However, Computers are way too logical, and they consider anything not on directly on your route to be out of route. So if you don't have that set, generally I you know the default I think is four, but I, I generally set mine at two or three. Uh, that allows you to get off the interstate, go to a truck stop that's that's what we would refer to as being located on the interstate but you know if, if you have to make a corner to get there you know the 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 program needs to know that or, or is going to know that that's out of route 
So we've got a, a one mile minimum, eight mile maximum uh, setting on that. Uh, minimum fuel purchases. This is a number that get, can get a lot of people confused. Time is money, but the other thing is money is money. And so where we understand that you want to minimize the number of times that you want to stop, the smaller you're willing to make this minimum fuel purchase, the more you can save in general. It's not always the case. I mean, it's really going to depend on, on the lanes that you're traveling. But, you know, take into consideration a, a scenario where you happen to end up out in Los Angeles or, or someplace where the fuel prices are extremely high and you need to, to get fuel even to be able to get out of that area. This is the scenario that we're, that we're referring to here as far as a minimum fuel purchase. You know, what, what's the minimum amount that you want to buy to get you down the road where we can find you better prices? Out of network purchases are only used for those that are that have networks that are set up, uh, and we can go into more detail in on that in another video. Your options over here in the right hand column: always fill the tank uh, is going to somewhat override any minimum settings over here. Uh, you know, when it when it suggests a stop, it's going to specify a gallon amount that it has calculated that will fill your tank. Fill at trip start, fill at trip end, uh, especially for those of you that have terminals that you've set up, uh, it will take that into consideration. Uh, absolute preferred method again refers to whether or not we even mess with the, the settings, the variable settings over here on this side. Uh, terminals, my terminals, if you have terminal facilities at, at, at any of your locations, you can set those up and specify the prices at those. Uh, fill network gaps with off-network stops. Uh, for those of you that are using specific chains that don't always cover the entire region that you're operating in, this will give you some options to, to fill those gaps. Optimize using X tax prices. By default, that, that checkbox is selected. What that's saying is optimize using the retail price minus any if to tax that's being paid at the pump. Because the if to tax varies so much from, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, uh, if you are not optimizing using X tax prices, you really need to fit into a very, very select group of, of people because your if to taxes are going to get paid one way or the other. We actually teach an entire seminar on this at, at some of the trade shows, but what it comes down to is the if to tax that you owe at the end of the quarter is not going to change dependent on where you stop to get fuel. What's going to change is the balance that you owe because some of it you're going to prepay when you're at the pump and whatever is not prepaid you owe at the end of the quarter or if you've paid too much at the pump then, then you can file for your refund. Uh, let, let me just say that unless you are in a group of leased owner operators where the carrier that you're leased to files your fuel tax for you and does not bill you back for any shortage, then you're going to want to have this checkbox marked. If, if you are in that select group of people, uh, where, where the carrier files for you and, and you do not get billed back, then you would unselect this box and at that point you're going to use retail price, straight up retail prices uh, in the price comparisons. For most people, open 24 hours is, is definitely going to be a consideration. 
for some regional operations, or it, it is not as much of a concern, and it can open up opportunities for, for some lower-priced uh, truck stops to be available to you. Here again, with any of these options, the more selective that you are, the more restrictive it makes the truck stop database to pull from. So anytime you're checking anything on this list, be sure that it's something that you actually need all the time. Because anytime you select anything, you're basically saying, I'm willing to give up optimizing my fuel dollar for getting Wi-Fi or a restaurant or a private shower or whatever. And in most cases, those are items that you can find specific to a trip or or a location and doesn't need to be considered on a consistent basis. Uh, for a lot of people, however, chains do play a big part. And we've got a big list of chains over here to select from. Now then, by default, all chains are included. But if you want to go through and say, no, I only want to use specific chains, uh, you know, you can click on them or hold down your, your control key on your keyboard and multi-select the chains that you want to use. And we can go in here and say, we'll use these. And at that point, that's that's the only chains that will be used in consideration for the, the fuel purchase optimization. And then we save these defaults. And we'll discuss in more detail understanding the fuel optimization results section in another video. So for now, have a great day, and we'll be back soon.